Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Peaceful Challenge. So today is going to be like the last regular episode. Things are coming to an end where I just go out, design and then build a farm. We also saved a good one for last. So it's going to be another peaceful specific farm that would only make sense really if you're playing peaceful. And in here yeah, today's case, doesn't even make too much sense at all, but it's going to be a fun one. So the plan is to make an arrow farm. Of course, you could buy arrows from the villagers, but with all the features we have in Peaceful, it's also possible to make a fully automatic arrow farm. And isn't that nice? So the way we can do this is using gravel duping, using the end portal, turn a gravel into flint by blowing it up with TNT, take that flint, combine it with you know, some bamboo, which gets auto-crafted into sticks, and some feathers to craft arrows. Of course, this wouldn't make any sense if you would play a regular world. You can always get arrows from skeletons a lot easier. And we also need the auto crafting to make it fully automatic. But I think it's going to be quite interesting. All right, let's start. So I haven't prepared anything yet. Just have a rough idea how it's going to work. We're going to figure it all out in this video. Okay, so here we have the gravity block duper, which can also run with gravel. So I'm just going to remove the concrete powder here. And then I think I have some gravel on me. Yes, place down three of the gravel blocks. So it's definitely not the goal to have the fastest possible yeah, arrow farm in Peaceful because it's going to be mainly limited by the production rate of the feathers anyway. So there's no point making a super fast flint farm now. Um, you don't need the arrows really and it's just for fun anyway. So I'm just going to stock up on one side here with uh, gravity blocks. And then we can turn it on. Oh, it's been a while since I have used this machine. I think this is for obsidian. I should turn it on, right? All right, yep. Still don't think we have chunk loading here. Just gonna spawn in a bot overworld. Then we can go to the end side. Yeah, we can see the gravel arriving. Okay, so we're getting uh, packets of three gravel blocks coming out at one side. At the moment this is set to basically a sand mode where the uh, gravel would now drop down and it's collected by the water and the only items would be sent to the side here. Yeah, we're already getting some gravel. Okay. Now what we need to do is instead of uh, having this in item form, we want the, the falling blocks be converted into yeah, blocks. Um, but we have an issue here, we would need to split up the gravel somehow, we're getting three at a time. And I actually don't have a good idea how to do this. Hmm. Maybe we should only use a single gravel block, would also be nice, it would be a lot easier just to collect a single block somewhere, I wouldn't really know how to split up this. I have a couple ideas that could work, but... Actually, not too interested in doing that. So we're just gonna use a single block. Um, yeah, somehow get it into block form, then I push it somewhere where it could be blown up with TNT. Unfortunately, we have all kinds of decoration around here. So if you remember this, we had a spaceship built around the whole concrete factory. So I actually see it from the outside. So I don't wanna mess up the look at all, even. So maybe if we collect the blocks, yeah, if it's only a single block, then it's gonna be easy. Somewhere here on the side, and then have a little conveyor and push it hmm, maybe towards the end island, and then hide the little TNT duper somewhere here in the end stone. I think this would, yeah, this would be okay. Then we just need a little opening here on the side, and it wouldn't really the ruin the look of our space station. Okay, so this is the plan. So now we need to rebuild this somehow. Yeah, to push the gravity block somewhere. So I switched to the creative copy of our survival to figure out the next steps. We have a very limited amount of space to work with and trying to figure out stuff uh, in survival. We don't have a lot of space to work with. A clean sheet is so much more time costly than uh, just doing it in creative and copying it over. All right, so somehow we need to turn those falling blocks into blocks. And the first thing I thought we could maybe add a switch um, to let those blocks drop further down. 
So here we have the waterlogged stair block. Uh, we could use a dispenser here to suck in the water and then pull it back. And then all the blocks would drop down. I already got a little mock-up how this could look like with the redstone here. So this could look like this. But then I remember that we already have a way to deal with the blocks a, a second way, which might be a lot easier. So we can maybe activate a switch again here. Just don't want to accidentally start the whole mechanism here on the creative copy as well. So I'm pretty sure the blocks would arrive somewhere here and would then bounce. But I think that the rest of the machinery will also be activated, which I actually don't want. So let's see what happens if I switch to this mode. Yeah. So we could have blocks dropping down here. And would the rest of the machinery be affected? No! Seems like that, that could be actually best possible solution. Just to have a couple blocks here. Yeah, that would stop everything. Just gonna place down. Okay, so get rid of those. And let's see which block we actually need out of those three. I guess this one would be fine. We could have our switch here, that's so much easier. <laughs> Okay, if I would deactivate this, then, yeah, as usual, the blocks would be sent over. Okay, yeah, this is definitely a lot easier. I'm gonna do it like this, so I don't need the dispenser and so on. Alright, so here we have the next step, uh, converting the falling blocks into blocks finally, and pushing them to the outside of a little smart piston setup. Every time we got a block, piston gets powered here. And, yeah, they push towards the endstone island. But I'm also kind of considering blowing up the blocks here already somehow. If just use a ton of obsidian, we can definitely shield the rest of the build from the explosion. This might also be an option. Um, I mean, this doesn't look too bad here on the outside. We can barely see it here. But also have the advantage that we don't need to dig any endstone if we try to do it inside of the space station. So, I guess I'll try around a little bit, see if we can get it to work. So I made another mock-up, but I'm fairly certain we can fit this inside of the space station. Okay, so we're getting gravel block every 16 ticks of 4,500 power. And we just push it here into the little blast chamber. So we got a TNT over here, and it's like a two-stage system. Because we need to activate this I think every roughly two seconds to deal with the incoming blocks. So we got a TNT dropping down here on top of the waterlock trapper that prevents it from blowing up. So while we also open the trapdoor and the TNT drops down and it blows up the incoming gravel and we will get 10% flint and 90% gravel in item form. We got a little hopper collection system here at the bottom. You got the counter running. So just on the numbers you can see yeah, it's four and a half thousand per hour. So it's fairly lossless I would say. Yeah, according to those numbers here, it's exactly four and a half thousand. Um, also, wouldn't know where we could have a loss of items. That's yeah, fairly simple. Uh, yeah, again, the waterlocked trapdoors here at the bottom. If we push the, the blocks directly above it. Items would drop down and just collect it by the hoppers. Hoppers that are shielded by the water again. Okay, so we're getting... Uh, it's a bit more now. Because of the randomness. So we should get 450 flint power, which we can then combine feathers and sticks into 1800 arrows power, which I think is fast enough for peaceful since we also don't need too many arrows. But I just like the idea of making this farm here. Um, yeah, a flint farm is kind of silly. Of course, we could also make this much faster if we would have more space and plan for everything, but. Um, it's a bit inconvenient once I have everything built around to later change it up, so I'm, I'm fairly happy with 1800 arrows per hour. Okay, I'm just thinking, should we build the chicken farm here in the end? We would need a yeah, quite large amount of chickens. We have, maybe have to do the math and see how much lag this causes. If it's okay to get 450 feathers per hour, then we can do it in the end. And of course, we also need 450 sticks per hour. Um, I'd say bamboo would be the way to go. Just a 
little bamboo farm should be fairly easy and then we could have everything really fully automatic uh yeah spitting out the arrows in the end unfortunately the chicken farm plan is off the table because we would need too many chickens so I quickly did the math so it takes on average seven and a half minutes for a chicken to lay an egg so it's basically random between five and ten minutes so you would get eight eggs per hour on average per chicken then if you have an egg there is only a one in eight chance that you actually get a chick if you throw it with a dispenser so basically you get one chicken per hour per chicken but there's also this additional one in 32 chance that you get four chickens at once it raises it a little bit to 1.09 then you get one feather per chicken, so totally you would need 412 chickens just laying eggs to produce more chickens. So we would have on average roughly about 500 to 600 chickens, which would produce a lot of lag. So we're not going to do that here in the end dimension. We can also maybe just take the feathers we get from the cat farm. And we're back in soil mode. It's a couple days later. The farm has been built up now and I also added a crafting system to it. So at the moment I'm about to start up the farm for the very first time in survival. We brought over feathers from our chicken farm or the cat gifting farm. Okay, um, I'm just gonna activate the switch here so this block goes down and then we're gonna quickly head down to see the farm working. It's also gonna take some time until it would actually start producing arrows. Okay, so let's switch it up. Now the grabber should be arriving down here as intended and it's also getting pushed forward. So I'm hoping the TNT duper, no, I guess nobody put an item in here. Okay. That's definitely gonna be an issue because now everything is jammed in front and probably gravel got pushed in there where the TNT is supposed to yeah, be. Okay. So let's try to put an item into the hopper clock and then this should start up properly. I don't like those sounds, but whatever that was. <laughs> okay. So one item in here. Yeah. Okay. Duper is working. Okay, now I'm just gonna break one of the gravel blocks here. Then it should be pushed forward again. There we go. Okay, items are getting dispensed here, so that's that's looking good. Did the explosions just stop for a moment there. Uh, it looks like it. Ah, it wasn't successful. I guess I have to search what's going wrong here. Okay, things are looking better. I just had to adjust the repeater timing. So this fade out clock uh, would actually stay on. Okay, so we can now follow the items to the crafting system. So at the bottom, the hoppers yeah, pick up all the flint and gravel and we dispense it into the water stream here. They go up the water item elevator and here they get sent to an item filter. So all the flint would go down and all the other items in this case, yeah, well, the, the gravel are dispensed into the lava cauldron here. Okay, so now we just need to wait a little bit until the auto crafting machine is gonna turn on automatically. So it's already stocked with feathers and sticks. And as soon as a certain threshold is reached, um, yeah, it will turn on automatically. So I also added a safety feature in case we run out of sticks and feathers would also stop uh, automatically again. Okay, so basically just waiting for this turret to turn, turn off, which is the case um, when we have all necessary items available. And then the starter clock here. Very so often you would craft four arrows that would end up in the bottom chest here. That's also probably the last time I'm gonna use the auto crafting system here, peaceful of course, and also in general for a while. So after 
We're done with Peaceful, I plan to play on Cycroft again, and before we're gonna do a, a little special project, we also won't have auto-crafting. That's actually to turn off the sound here, those note blocks just drive me insane. Okay, so that's better. Yeah, what I wanted to you know, talk about is was auto-crafting in general, so I think it was a huge success. Um, we had a lot of fun with it, and I definitely see the potential for it being, you know, a nice addition to the game. Can only hope that something would be added at some point and also in this form. Um, what I'm a bit of worry about is that we maybe get a dumbed down version that wouldn't be as interesting, but yeah, auto crafting general was a definitely a good decision to have and a lot of fun to play with. And I don't think it took away much um, from the game in terms of, well, you have to craft on your own. I think it's really well balanced the way it is right now. It's also possible to do simple tasks and more complicated recipes like here the, yeah I would say the arrow crafting is also a bit more complicated it's definitely doable but it might not be yeah very accessible for everyone of course but most people that think maybe auto crafting is too complicated for them they probably also won't have a need for it. I mean, it just makes life a little bit more convenient. I think it fits the theme of Minecraft by being a little bit challenging here. So I have to do all kinds of redstone around to get it to work. Um, but it's also, to be honest, it's still a lot easier to just craft yourself. So I definitely spent like two hours making the system here, building it in survival, bringing over all the resources. The alternative would have been to, at some point, spend a minute and craft it on my own. So it's, it's not really necessary to have, but it's, it's a lot of fun um, yeah, in this form. Okay, so I'm just gonna wait a little bit longer. I think the threshold for the gravel, uh, sorry, the flint, is actually a dropper being completely filled up. And then the hopper here in the back needs some items. And of course, it needs to trickle through the item filter first. So we need to technically get a bit over 600 flint, which should take over one hour. So I'm just gonna, yeah, wait until that's actually the case here. The wait is finally over and we're producing arrows now. Okay, so let's check out the auto craft system real quick. Here we got the crafting table. Yeah, put in some dummy items again. And then take those out first, then the arrows. And... Why don't just, yeah, we'll get our arrows, fully automatic arrows. Of course, we should still add auto crafting and a bamboo farm and the chicken farm. It would have been too laggy for my taste. So we can also just bring those items over. Right, super happy with the last farm and peaceful. Hope you enjoyed this episode. So we got two more episodes coming. Thanks guys for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.